We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Hello, welcome to Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. On today's special pre-election edition, we're going to cover the full table on everything you need to know about the 2024 election. It's going to be quite the show. And remember, this show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access podcasts, breaking news analysis, and a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American constitution. The election is here. What's going to happen? What has been happening? What's the feel of the campaigns? What will be the big surprises as we come into Election Day? We're very fortunate to have with us longtime host of this here radio show and Liberty Nation's senior political analyst, Mr. Tim Donna, to run the entire gamut. Thanks for being here, Tim. Always a pleasure, Mark. So, Tim, let's start with the basics. The campaigns are pretty much over now at time of recording. Uh, they've delivered their, their final pitches to the voters. Um, what's, your, wait, what's been your feel of the campaigns have these differed to historical campaigns even campaigns by trump himself in the past what's the general uh what's the word here the aura of the campaigns well i'd say with donald trump he had uh designed his whole campaign around running against joe biden Mm. and when biden pulled out in july uh, trump had a tough time sort of figuring out how to attack kamala harris who represents the same administration, but is a different person, brings a different vibe, and at least looks like she's not in cognitive decline. So he had to make a big adjustment, and it took him a while, especially considering that Kamala Harris had a whole bump of good news for her. First, she gets handed the nomination by party elites, party bigwigs. Then she gets, you know, the Democratic National Convention where she made a pretty good speech and had all these, this what I call manufactured joy Mm -hmm. and vibes that carried on in between. She had her selection of the vice president. And at that point, it almost didn't matter who, but it gave her another publicity bump, which elite media, of course, hyped up tremendously. And then she had the debate uh, with Donald Trump in early September in which she performed admirably. Uh, He wasn't sure, I think, how to attack her until the last several weeks when he finally got his sea legs in terms of how his message uh, in trying to defeat Kamala would compare to his message with Joe Biden. And while the message is somewhat similar, he's exploited the fact that Joe Biden was at least a known quantity and Kamala Harris isn't. He's tried to pin her down on things. He's demanded that she make herself accountable and at least available. And she hasn't done that. However, going to the other side with Kamala Harris, she sort of was riding on a wave of vibes and good feelings and the first woman president, the first black woman president, the prospect of that. And when she was putting out positive vibes, she was ahead in the national polling and ahead in a lot of the swing state polling. But when she started turning to a dystopian vision of America that Donald Trump is elected, calling him a fascist, if she even could define that term, but she went along with it. Uh, Once she started down the road of dystopia, her numbers froze and then started to drop, not precipitously, but more than enough for Donald Trump to take an actual lead in national polling, which is an ominous sign for her. They have decided, ironically, the Harris campaign has decided that the only way to win this race is to scare people off of Donald Trump. Sound familiar? Mm. Hillary Clinton tried to do that in 2016, and it obviously didn't work. Um, Calling half of Trump supporters deplorable and irredeemable is the equivalent of calling Trump a fascist, because what you're implying is that people that vote for him 
are either fascists themselves or have a soft spot for authoritarians. And that's no way to close a campaign, in my humble opinion. I, I think you're absolutely right there, Tim. And to carry on that point, uh, I was, I'm, I'm not uh, easily shocked by politics, Tim, as I, I swim in those waters. But when, I think it was MSNBC, started showing footage of Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden and then interspersing it with footage of a Nazi rally that was held there in 1939. I mean, what are you saying about those people? If, you know, they're in the audience, is there any way that anybody who's there is now going to think, well, I'll support the candidate that literally tied me into being a Nazi? I, I just don't see how you can... We well, look, that back. what it is, is an admission to the electorate that she's been unable or at best unwilling to define herself. Mm. She's been unable to project any image of what a Harris presidency would look like. She's been unable to provide people a vision of how she would be different than Joe Biden and how she would be the same. She said I'm not a continuation of the Biden presidency. But when asked famously on The View, which could not be a more comfortable setting for her, what she might have done differently than Joe Biden, she said, nothing comes to mind. And I was in on all the decisions. Well, who would have figured that a soundbite from The View would turn out to be the fodder for an entire Trump ad campaign? which basically says, if you elect Kamala Harris, you're going to get the same thing we've had the last mm. four years, the inflation, the staggering economy, an overrun border, out of control crime, soaring prices at the grocery store, which and everything else from fast food to gas to groceries, everything's more expensive. And it's hard to overcome that because people are reminded of it every single time they spend money. Yes, it it was actually, I, I felt it was really a, because Kamala Harris is nothing if not a consummate politician. You know, she speaks in the sound bites. She tries never to go too far away from the scripted remarks, to her detriment, in my opinion. Uh, but it was really a, a terrible idea of hers to fall into that trap because you had Donald Trump and his campaign surrogate saying, this is just a continuation of Joe Biden. It's just going to be exactly the same. This is what she's offering you. And what she should have done is differentiated herself. But instead, um, out of either a lack of thinking, a loyalty to Joe Biden that she has not displayed beforehand, or, or just getting caught out in the moment, she said, no, there's, there's not a thing that I would do differently. And that really defined Donald Trump's campaign because it was quite amorphous, quite nebulous, his accusations prior to that saying, it's going to be the same. And then she goes on The View, which let's be fair, people on the right don't watch it, people on the left tune into it, uh, a, a significant number. Uh, and she goes and she just agrees with the accusation that Donald Trump's been making. And how do you walk that back? I mean, it's it's it seems to me that there are so many missteps in her campaign from, as, as you pointed out earlier, she started with this joy and good vibes thing, and she was doing very, very well in the polls. A lot of that was because of the various events that give her the bumps. Uh, but then she switched to demagogues, fascism and dystopia. And we've seen it in the polls ever since. She's been not gaining any ground. Donald Trump has been gaining ground. And now at time of recording, He's got a national lead over Kamala Harris. Now, we're going to talk about those polls after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.